Hello everybody, <clears throat> welcome back to my television review series. Today we'll be discussing Narcos Season 3 review. It says review on the boards. So we'll do Narcos Season 3 review. <laughs> but you know how we do these ones. I'll give you my overall grade and impressions. After that, if you have not seen the season and would like to, you're going to want to shut off the video because there will be spoiler alerts. We'll be discussing the plot synopsis and character development and major themes. So overall, Again, I kept season two. Season one and two were about capturing uh, Pablo Escobar. Season three is really how the, the, the Kali cartel kind of took over the cocaine trafficking after uh, the death of Pablo Escobar. So really, like the, the real development of the, of the you know, without getting into like the spoiler alerts, is just again, the succession of the next, of the next narco traffickers um, coming to play. And so again, your typical type of, you know, good guy, bad guy, uh, cartel drug dealers and DEA type of deal, but with the historical reference, with the historical backing, again, some of the crime shows can get just kind of redundant to me, you know, go kill that guy, go kill that guy, just with like baseless characters, if there's some sort of the development, it's just kind of like a, the characterization is kind of weighing on me. But with actual historical backing, it's easier to bump it up because again, mostly in the background is, you know, what historical facts or tidbits can I get out of the show. So that was well produced, I thought it was well done. I really like the history uh, backing to it, so I'm going to keep season 3 as an A-. minus. So I think really well done, like the history aspects, um, and learn, learn some new stuff, because I was, again, I know the name Pablo Escobar, but not like, not, I don't know the history of the Mafia, I don't know the history of uh, what, what's going on in Central uh, Latin America throughout the years, besides America and CIA fucking everything up, I do know that for sure. So. That's kind of a major theme going on in the season, but so I think it's really well done. And if you've not seen the season, would like to shut off this video now, so we'll be discussing the plot synopsis and character development. So again, I didn't write anything down for this one. Ten seasons on Netflix, probably about between forty-five minutes an hour an episode. I wrote down the major characters, certainly a lot of other uh, supporting characters throughout the thing. So again, major major plot developments. I do not have. I did not write it down uh, scene by scene. But, so you start off season three, Pablo Escobar has died, you get the, the Kali cartel coming back in, and they were relevant in um, season, season two, but they really start taking over. So we get Miguel, Miguel Rodriguez, Hilberto Rodriguez, Pacho Herrera, Chepe, or like the, the, the four big major players of the Kali cartel. And throughout the whole season, uh, they're just the DA trying to round up those people. So you learn that the Kali cartel was a lot more subtle with their violence as opposed to uh, Pablo Escobar. The, the amount, you know, it's also narrated, and this season is narrated by Javier Pena, or the, the actor who plays that. Um, the Murphy, Steve Murphy, the white dude from the first two seasons is not in this season at all. But uh, Pena gets, um, he gets promoted because of the, the uh, dealings with Escobar. And so they kind of start off and they, they know that the, the Kali cartel is moving more uh, cocaine than uh, Medellin did, but they're not like really, they don't have like a search block, they don't have anyone down in Colombia, they don't have anyone like really, really like looking into it for some reason. And so again, maybe some, probably some political thing, the, the United States doesn't, well, wants Colombia to be this part of their, their friend of the United States in this way or something. So at the beginning of the season, they really don't have much going on in terms of searching for people. Um, uh, Payne has agents working under him this season. He has Bill Stechner and Chris Feistel. Feistel? 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 Kind of an interesting last name. F-E-I-S-T-L. But one of them wants to go down to Columbia. Um, originally, Payne kind of denies that. And then he, after two or three episodes, they end up going down to Columbia. And so, the pretty much episode one, Pacho kills some dude. Pa Pacho's a uh, homosexual, so he's like he goes into this club. He has he has some beef with some dude. The oh the Cali oh the the overall theme really for the for plot development is they want to they're the big leaders, but they want to surrender. And so they want to surrender to the Colombian government so that they can buy their way out or, you know, leave prison or have tons of influence as opposed to getting um, um, 
getting captured and extradited to the United States of America. So you have the Colombian government trying to uh, negotiate a surrender deal with the um, the the jefes of the uh, of the of the Cali cartel, but you also have the American DEA trying to catch them before that solidifies, knowing that it's just going to be a facade with the um, Colombian government or the Colombian being imprisoned in Colombia. So that that's really the overall theme of the entire of the entire season. So Pacho goes in there, he fakes like he's gonna. He's, you know, hey, hey, we're going to squash this beef. He, he buys a bottle of liquor for the guy that he's beefing with. And he's like, you know, I'm going to drink this with you in a second. He goes, dances, and makes out with his boyfriend. Comes back, grabs the bottle, smashes it over the dude's head. And then, like, t like literally like, rips him apart. They, like, tie him up to, uh, like, a bunch of people on motorcycles. To, and his arms are tied up. And then they drive him in the opposite direction. And they rip his arms off. And so that, that's kind of, like, the first, the first body of the season. But I think that does play a bigger role in, in, with the solid czars later on. But so, and they're, they're doing your typical thing, you know, selling drugs, killing people. And then about halfway through the season, Gilberto Rodriguez is arrested. So he gets captured first. They raid his house. Um, I, I think they just see him. And, and one of these, in the actual production of the show, this is probably episode, you know, three to four, four to five. Um, literally the transition, I wasn't sure, because you have one episode where or the okay, so the dude oh, it does play a bigger role. The dude that Pacho killed, his wife, um, then shacks up with Miguel Rodriguez. And so Gilberto, Gilberto is pretty much like the leader of them all, and they decide you know they're going to sell for six months and then then do the surrender deal. And so the the dude whoever Pacho kills in the first episode becomes like the girlfriend of Miguel. And so he gets caught. He but the the production of the show, like one of the season end or one of the episodes ends. And it's like the two Stechner and Feistel like looking at Miguel Rodriguez, and then the next episode they capture Gilberto. So I'm not really sure exactly like what if I missed some subtlety playing poker at that time or something. But it looked like they were going to get Miguel Rodriguez and they get Gilberto. But you know they they raid his house. He is like under they had a, a name in Spanish for it, but like a little a hideout. And so he's like you know big lavish bathroom and like the wooden staircase walking up to the bathroom. He is found underneath there. So for the most of the, I'd say probably 60% of the season, Gilberto is in prison, incarcerated. Um, and he it is in Colombia. And so Miguel kind of takes over as the head dude. Um, you have, you meet David Rodriguez, David, who is Miguel's son, and Nicolaus. I don't know what that's like spelled in Spanish. But Nicolaus, I think it's Nicholas. Well, Nick, I, I just don't know what, how they spell it. <laughs> but uh, David is Miguel's son, and Nicholas is Gilberto's son. So, uh, D David is kind of, you know, kind of all over the place, you know, kind of out there. Um, the, they kill, who else do they kill? They kill, they kill some other dude who basically, all oh, the guy, whoever, whoever, uh, fucked up that got El Hilberto arrested. So they kill that guy, they kill his wife, and at that point, the major, um, Sal Salcedo, where is he at? Jorge Salcedo, he is the head of security for Miguel and Gilberto. Um, Paulo Mari is the lead accountant. Um, and then Chepe is running in, is in the New York operation. So Chepe is really kind of, like not, he's not a huge role in, this, in the show because he's in New York, certainly some relevance. But Jorge Salcedo, once, once they, he realizes that the, the dude who messed up for um, the, the head of security for Gilberto, he, now he becomes the head of security. He's like, you know, if I mess up, I'm going to get killed as well. So about halfway through the season, you really have Jorge um, trying to help the DEA agents get Miguel Rodriguez. And they basically, you know, a negotiation deal. If you give us Miguel, we'll give you, you know, witness protection in the United States. And so right about halfway through the season, after Gilberto gets arrested, you have the North Bale, Norte Bale cartel. So you have like the Salazars, which is just another cartel. And so they, they picture um, the, the Kali cartel as weak. So they, they start uh, killing people. Um, I think specifically, and throughout the season after Gilberto is arrested, Pacho is really somewhere else, like in hiding. And Miguel is kind of like the, the leader of the, the Kali cartel, or like even just like the, the main character of the show. Certainly the leader of the Kali cartel. And so... And then Navagante from previous seasons is just the main enforcer for the Kali cartel. 
And so Pacho's in hiding somewhere in the Salazars in the North Valley, North Valley cartel. They, they, they send a hit squad. So Pacho gets out, but they end up killing his brother. Um, so Pacho definitely wants some serious revenge against the Salazars later on. And so that's kind of pretty much where they stand. And then the kind of the last chunk, three, four, five episodes of the season is um, Jorge Salcedo trying to, you know, have, ex have exactly uh, where, where Miguel is at all times. And then after, there's another incident where it's like uh, the North, North Valley cartel, uh, they go to some party. David really wants Miguel, his father, to show his face where Gilberto always did in some festival in Cali. And so North, North Valley cartel shoots that place up. And at that time, uh, Salcedo was trying to have Miguel get arrested, but you know, he still has to act the role of the head of security. And so he gets him out from that, from that, uh, that incident. And Miguel makes Jorge the head of his security then, even though he's trying to set him up. And so there's a scene where like, you know, Jorge looked like you knew it was coming. He's sitting there like, uh, no say, no say. <laughs> because you're always working, just for my security. Thanks, man. And Jorge's like, cool. So, close one. But, so just a couple different interactions of trying to get Miguel Rodriguez arrested. And so, that doesn't work. The next time they try to do so, they do get very close. The basically they get this warrant. There's something with a warrant. Like again, the the Colombian government's heavily, heavily corrupted. So they have to have like a warrant with no name on it. Have this guy, so so that they, the Miguel doesn't get tipped off. And so they actually find the apartment of where Miguel is at. They they have the warrant. They get into the house, and Miguel has like a little safe room where he's like literally hiding behind a a, a bat or a, like a shower. Because they, they go in there and they realize like he couldn't have left anywhere, so they go to a, a different apartment and measure the dimensions to see like which what, what modifications would have been made for like a safe house, a getaway place, a, a stash house, stuff like that. And so they find him behind the behind the, the shower wall. He's literally got like an oxygen oxygen mask so he can breathe. They're drilling in through the wall. They find the air pocket. One of the drills goes right through his arm or like grazes his arm, injures him. Um, but then. The head of the DEA, who's working for Kali Cartel, comes up and is like, you know, right as they're about to break down and get him, he's like, you know, ce cease and desist all actions immediately. And so, over a technicality, they cannot arrest Miguel. And so he gets away there. Um, at this point, David, uh, Miguel's son, is heavily suspected that Jorge Salcedo is the one, is the rat setting people up. And so, again, when they found, um, when they found, uh, the uh, Miguel behind the behind the behind the the shower. The basically what happens is Jorge had a dude underneath him called Enrique. I forgot to put him up here, but Enrique, black Colombian, and he um, he's Jorge is going to let the DEA pass at a checkpoint. Again, they have people all around the, the apartments to for lookouts and stuff. And so Jorge says, you know, hey Enrique. Um, you know you're you're good for the night. I'll, I'll take the I'll take the I'll take the the spot here, the, the the position here for the lookout. And then for whatever reason, uh, Jorge, or Jorge gets called in by Miguel, and you know he's gonna get back to his position. But then Miguel's like, you know, you're gonna stay for dinner. And then that's when they all rush in. So Enrique is the one who let the let the DEA pass, and of course Enrique was not in on it. So. What Jorge does is when Enrique is trying to radio in that the DA is coming, he turns off the walkie-talkies. And so Jorge does Enrique dirty. So Enrique gets killed for doing nothing wrong, but Jorge kind of like set him up. Well, not set him up, it will set him up, but like fucked up and then set him up. So Enrique gets whacked for that. Um, yeah, there's just a scene where they like they plant, uh, Jorge's got a beeper from the DA and when they're torturing Enrique and he's telling them exactly what Jorge did, you know, Jorge like bumps into him and drops a DA pager that he has into Enrique's pocket. And the DA is literally currently paging him, so they find that right as they're about to kill Jorge, then they whack Enrique. And so Jorge does Enrique very dirty in the show. Um, and then, so then towards the end, they, they finally agree to surrender. Well, they do. So they arrest Miguel Rodriguez first, and then and then Pacho and Chepe decide to um, 
to surrender. So Magellan gets arrested, he goes to prison, and then Chepe and Pacho surrender. So when they surrender, um, you know, I'm sure I'm missing good, good plot developments with just the major stuff I remember. But before they surrender, um, Miguel, Alberto's already always been promising Chepe and Pacho stuff. Miguel comes through for Chepe with a new passport and locations of the Salazars who, who killed his brother early in the season. So before Pacho surrenders, he does another nice act of slaughtering all the North Valley cartel people. So they're all dead, where most of the big ones are. <laughs> then he surrenders in a church. That's the lack of couple dudes first. And so, um, uh, Chepe also out of the season, he has some reporter who's going to run a story on him, so some heat comes down on him throughout the thing, and he just whacks the reporter anyway. So, so he kills the reporter and then lays low. But then, but then they, they uh, surrender. So once they surrender, this is at, at, towards the end of the thing, what happens to Navigante, uh, 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 Salcedo kills him. So they're basically trying to get Jorge and his family out once, once that uh, Miguel um, uh, gets, gets arrested. Oh, this is a big development. So they can, David is always suspecting Jorge is a part of you know, setting people up. And so they go to some, some business they have on the payroll. And there's a, there's a camera. They find the DEA stash house of where these two, Stetchner and Feistel, are staying. And so, like, oh, Stetchner's the CIA dude. Von Ness is the other DEA agent under uh, Pena. But they find the stash house or where, where the DEA is staying, and they, they check the security cameras, and they see Salcedo going into into talk with DEA. So that, at, at that point, they're certain, David is certain that Salcedo is the rat. He tells Miguel. Miguel is literally torturing Jorge. And then the DA uh, bust in and save him, right? As right, he's literally getting suffocated. And so he gets saved then, and then he goes to, to get his family. And when he's going to get his family, like they, they leave, they leave Kali, and then they come back to Colombia. And then uh, Navagante basically finds um, Pena, Salcedo, Feistel, and Von Ness trying to rescue Salcedo's family. And the whole, the rest of the Cali dudes are all looking for uh, Salcedo and his family to kill them. So Navagante finds them as they're literally rescuing the family. Navagante wants to kill, oh, they're rescuing Palomari. So the, the cartel also wants to kill the head accountant because basically they, when they raided Miguel's office, they get this ledger and Palomari is going to be the one that's going to be able to decode it and testify against them. Halfway through the season, another major development I missed, there was another guy that was, that was arrested in Curacao, Curacao, but he... He was like their, he was their main money launderer. And so they find him, and there's a thing where it's like his wife gets kidnapped and held in the jungle, um, and, and he's not going to cooperate with the DA until he's allowed to um, uh, talk with his wife or know his wife is safe or something. So the Kali cartel kidnaps the wife, puts him in the jungle with the gorillas, and uh, Pena ends up rescuing her with uh, the help of Don Berna, which I'm not exactly sure what what if he's a new cartel dude he's they say he's the new per major dude in Medellin but I, I don't know I don't know if it's part of a cartel if it's just Don Berna the, just the big dude but he uh, Pena uses Don Berna to um, infiltrate the gorillas kill kill some farmers or the gorillas or whatever they are they call them farmers but and then they get the get the the chick back and so once they get the chick back they're walking down ready to go get the the testimony from the, the major money launderer and it, right when that happens, he gets stabbed in the neck and killed in prison, so he can't testify. So there, there is no longer any leverage from the money launderers. So the last hope for really testimony is the lead accountant, Palavari. So they're rescued. Salcedo, the DEA needs Salcedo to help locate Palavari. Right when they're finding Palavari and getting his family out, not Jorge's family, um, Navagante finds Jorge and tells him, you know, they have radios, and Ping is like, you know, is it safe to come out, Salcedo? And Navagante's got a gun to his head, and he's like, you know, say it's all clear, <clears throat> because Navagante and the Cali cartel want both Salcedo and Palomar dead. So they're using Salcedo to get Palomar out. He says it's all clear, and then Navagante, as he's going to um, get out of the car, you know, he kind of he slips. You can't catch him slipping at the gas station, but he takes the gun off Jorge, and Jorge throughout the season, who has never carried a pistol. 
has gotten a pistol, pulls it out on Navagante, and whacks, whacks, whacks the dude. So Navagante gets gets some plomo, he gets muertoed. Salcedo stays alive. Pacho and Chepe get quickly murdered in prison. Pacho gets shot up in prison um, by North Bali, North de Bali, Norte. Chepe tries to like form an alliance with the, uh, I think it's Castellanos, not Castellanos, I think, and yeah, maybe Castel Castaños, but there's, there's two other, like the, the, the Colombians fighting um, the, the guerrilla warfare or the, the communists. Again, there's always this little act, act, slight aspect of communism throughout the, the show with the CIA dude. But Chepe tries to like uh, join their team. Basically, he lets himself out of prison. So again, they, they voluntarily surrendered in a Colombian prison, and Chepe just kind of like lets himself out. But I mean, they show him like, you know, with some tools, but pe people just letting himself out. Tries to start off the empire again, and then tries to team up with these these, these uh, communist fighters, the guerrilla warfare people, and then they just kill him. So I don't, I don't know what Chepe was thinking. I don't know if they are on good terms or not, but Chepe gets 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 plo or gets. Gets worked done pretty quick. Palomari lives. David, he gets killed. He is killed by some Norte Bali drive-by shooters. Um, Nicholas, he's alive. Pena. So after all of this, there's a major thing where it's like they find the evidence and then they realize that the, the president had accepted uh, five million or six million dollars of campaign contributions from Kali to basically full immunity. So. That's when uh, Pena learns from Snatcher, the CIA, or there's, there's another CIA or like ambassador dude or higher up a government official over Pena, but the higher up dude plays the tapes that Pena has. Once, once Pena is absolutely certain that the Colombian government was on the tape, the, other, the, the higher up agent plays the tape, literally, literally having the voice audio of the president of Colombia taking contributions. So Pena's like, what the fuck? Why did the U.S. government know about this the whole time and do nothing? And then again, that's where you get the little aspect of, you know, this is beneficial to the United States in some way. Um, so Pena ends up ends up speaking out. Um, he goes on record. You know, I, I don't know if that's, I think it's the fit character's name, but in actual in real life, the agent goes on record, the, whoever the lead DA agent in Colombia at the time was, with all the investigations, and it becomes publicly known that the president accepted uh, cartel money, and you know the public's not happy about it, but it doesn't change the government in any way. So that's really kind of the end of the, the season. Miguel and Herberto get uh, extradited to the United States, and they are in prison forever. I don't know if they're still alive or not. Um, Jorge Salcedo, he gets, uh, him and his family live, and they get witness protection. Pena resigns, and at the very end of the season, you know, there some other dude comes up to him and is like, you know, with a few phone calls, that fake resignation will go away. Now it's time to go to Mexico. And so, obviously on Netflix, you can see there's three seasons of Narcos Mexico. So, my guess is there's some overlap there, but I mean, obviously I haven't watched this season yet. Um, but there was also, I thought it was Chucho Pena, uh, Javier's father, is uh, Ignacio Cortina from uh, uh, Mayans. So I thought that was funny, just seeing like Chicho Pena, whoever the actor is, just playing the dads of all the gangbangers. Well, I guess he's playing the dad of the DA in this one. But if you need an old, old Latino father, the, whoever plays Chicho Pena seems to be getting around. If, uh, who's the other, who is the other? Uh, Danny Trejo, if he's not, if he's not available. <laughs> but again, overall, thoroughly enjoyed it. Really liked the historical backing. Thought it was well done, well produced. 10 episodes on Netflix, A minus. So major themes, again, just like government corruption. Obviously, the United States is a disgusting fucking shithole and fucking toppled any government or, you know, facilitated this guerrilla group or this, this counter-offensive group for any government that they didn't want. Like, like when everyone's worried about Iran right now, I read some history about, you know, how the, the from the 70s today in Iran, the, the, the U.S. had a big change in the regime, so it's like basically whatever, whatever benefits the United States' delusional interests, and then they just go fuck up this country and say, well, we're the good guys, and we don't care, so the way it is, the way the world works. So that major theme was pretty, uh, pretty obvious and historical, historically accurate. Um, and besides that, just gangbangers and co cops and robbers. So thoroughly enjoyed it, really liked it. Um, next show I'm going to watch 
haven't reviewed a movie in a while, and I wanted to go see Avatar in 3D. May or might not see that, just not super close to a movie theater. But I'll do a movie review here soon. Um, but next on the television uh, agenda, itinerary, probably, I'll probably watch the Dahmer. So, like, the thing about Jeffrey Dahmer. So, so that'll probably be the next one I watch. Just check that out. So, thank you for watching my review of Darko Season 3, and I hope you, hope you enjoyed it. Hope you'll watch the show. Thanks for watching.